practice uh, 11 today, 12 on Saturday. Uh, our loads are now much heavier, meaning that you know we're sustaining uh, six, eight, 10, 12 play drives, uh, working just about every situation and scenario from uh, the usual mix down stuff, third, medium, and long. Red zone ball coming out today. Several two minute scenarios, just watching our guys play ball, everybody off the field. And uh, you know, we, uh, there's progress uh, and there's a ways to go. You know, our, our level of consistency is not where it needs to be. Our level of physicality is not where it needs to be. And um, you know, we really have to just drive that in knowing that it takes time. It takes time to improve that. It takes time to establish that type of DNA and mentality, but we're not coming off of it. You know, it's the only, it's the only way we can progress from a, a physical standpoint is to practice it, watch it on tape, learn from it, walk through it, teach it, and then rep it again and again and again. Uh, and then just from a level of performance, there are some real bright spots, and then again, inconsistency. So we're gonna keep working, um, gonna keep pushing, encouraging, challenging, and making sure we're doing it together. You know, everything we do is like this, but we, we go and we go hard, and spring football around here is very serious. And we work really, really hard, and so that's what we're going to keep doing. What, what's the, what are the benefits of having a former head coach of 10 years with Charles on the staff? Is that what kind of a practice? Sure, no, he's invaluable. I mean, it starts with he's an awesome human being. You know, the guys that we hire, we want to make sure that's, that box has to be checked first and foremost. His ability to communicate, to relate, um, establish relationships, be a teacher. He's just a great teacher and connector. And when you can connect like that, you have that experience. You know, you have that credibility. Then you know it goes a long way. And then he's a disciplinarian. You know, he holds guys to high standards. He's done it as a head coach, as a coordinator. He's been in, in on championship programs. So guys like that, I mean, it's awesome. You know, it's a little bit surreal to have guys like that on our staff. And we got a, a good chunk of them on our staff. So it's been it's been fun watching all these guys work together. And he said it the other day, the fact that these guys put all the egos aside. You know, out there, it's to watch guys like that. Um, you, you, and I can say this for the entire staff, guys that they come every day to work like as if they have everything approved. You know what I mean? And it shows up, and I think it's it's contagious, and I think our players have responded well. Um, we just got to keep pushing. What, what did you like about the skill set of Mitchell Agood to make you want to add him? And where in the front seven are you still looking for help? Okay. He is not signed. He has announced, but hasn't signed. With, with regard to, <laughs> thank you. I thought him announcing might have given clearance. With uh, with regard to the front seven, are you, do you still have your eye out for more edge players, inside backers, defensive tackle? Where is there a need still in your eyes? Everything. You know, we, we need to get better on our entire team. Us as coaches, as players, as an organization, we gotta get better. And the levels of physicality in the front seven and the offensive line, the tight end box, have got to be elevated. Part of it is depth, part of it is strength and conditioning, part of it is practice, so part of technique and fundamentals. And then it ends with mentality. And we have to establish a mentality and an identity by the way we practice and by the way we play. So those positions, it's, it, we're never gonna stop trying to add pieces. I guess that's the best way to put it. We're looking for explosive guys that play with a ton of physicality and have an, an edge to them. You have to play at the line of scrimmage with um, a disposition where you're gonna you're gonna affect the other side of the ball. And that's an every down thing. That's not a sometimes thing. So we're, we're gonna keep doing that. Mario, your, uh, your quarterbacks are all looking good, at least while we're viewing them. Um, are you interested in creating a package or packages for your backup quarterback, whoever that ends up being um, on a regular basis so they can get into games? Or is that something we normally would not do? I'm more interested in just continuing to install the offense and helping guys get better. I think any comment outside of that you know, starts a narrative that could go this way or that way. And I just don't want to do that. I say that respectfully. You know, I just don't, uh, you know, we're learning a system. And uh, we're, our team is very systematic and process oriented. And they've all done a really, really good job. And whether it be a quarterback, an offensive lineman, a wide receiver, it doesn't matter the position. If a guy shows that he can help us win, he's going to play. We're going to find ways to get guys in games. And that relates to anybody on the field. Can you say anything specifically about how Jake is doing or how 
Oh, how, what, how guys how are doing. Garcia and how okay. Tyler. I think I'm a little bit guarded at quarterback question. Obviously, Jacari is new, but I, well, I know he's doing well, but I'm talking about Jake. Jake's doing a great job. Okay. So so has Jacori. You know, okay. I think the quarterback room in general, they're very well coached. You know, as a leader, Coach Gaddis has done a great job. As a quarterback coach, Frank Ponce is a very detailed coach. Okay. He's very demanding. You know, he's very attention detail oriented. And what you see is you see guys doing, just being very, um, I would say they're very accurate because their decision-making processes are being sped up and they're being held accountable to do so. You know, so pre to post snap read decisions are becoming much more clear. Uh, understand the offense and where to go with the ball when it calls for it from a read standpoint, an RPO standpoint, whatever it may be. Uh, it's all the efficiency and the speed of it's getting better and better. So those guys are all getting better. What have you seen from, from Jalen Richardson? I know when you got here, you were probably still rehabbing from surgery and everything. Um, now he's kind of starting back in the swing of things, getting back into, into reps and everything. What have you seen from him, both like kind of on the mental side of things and staying focused, and also now getting to see him actually yes, sir. going? No, yeah, I like to talk about that guy. That guy's impressive. Man. That guy's an impressive young man, first and foremost, and then he is a big, physical, athletic, tough guy. It's, it's great to have him out there. Now he's just about full. And he takes about 75% of the reps. He's got great power, great balance and body control. He understands leverage, uses his hands really well. Hard to have the combination of a guy that's, that's light-footed but heavy-handed, and he has that. So when he strikes you and he gets hands on you, I mean, you feel it. You know, he does a good job knocking people that way and can really slide his feet and anchor and protect the quarterback. Very smart, great communicator, challenges his teammates, challenges himself. A tremendous blessing to have Jalen on this team. And what about, do you see like anything, like I said, when you first got here and he was still super limited, still recovering, or do you see anything like off the field wise about how he kind of stayed mentally focused, stayed prepared and everything to get back into the field? Well, you saw a large human, you know, <laughs> I mean, that was a big thing is, you know, you, we need to increase the size and length of our team, right? The girth of our football team. When he walked down the, hall, the hallway, you know, impressive on the hoof and you were like, well, I hope, you know, his play matches what he looks like. And, he hasn't disappointed. He is, he's been excellent. You know, he really, really has and looking forward to him. I mean, he's really cleared. You know, we're just going very, um, I wouldn't say methodical, but we're, we're being, I would say, a little bit on the conservative side, even though he has been fully cleared. With the, with, with the physicality, you mentioned you wanted to keep it through the grid. I'm curious, have you seen growth since first practice till now from the guys we out have. there? We have, you know, and, you know, he, you know, I stay on it pretty hard, and I'm sure sometimes, you know, it's a, uh, it just, I come at that really hard, right, because typically in the games and the levels that we're trying to accomplish here at the University of Miami, that's going to be such a big part of it. It's critical to the growth of our program, but you see it, you see it in spurts, right, because teams that could play with good knee bends and flat backs in the fourth quarter that can play with their hands inside, roll their hips, run through contact. Those teams are typically going to be successful, right? Their angles are going to be better, right? They're going to be able to wrap up and finish plays better. So you got to practice it. You know, preaching it is fine. Talking about it is, is great, but you got to practice it. And when it's not exactly what you look like, you teach off and you go out and do it again. And you see growth. You see progress towards what we're trying to be. I don't think that ever stops. I don't think you ever leave and say, wow, we're but there is progress and we got to keep doing it. And the fact that we're lifting very aggressively during this time of year, we're going day on, day off with lift days in between, heavy walkthrough and install days in between. All that helps. All right, so you in essence have, what is that, about six, seven weeks of just developmental time. A lot of it dedicated towards the physical nature of our football team. Coach, you talked about the deep. Coach, you talked about the defense at last scrimmage. Yeah. Are there a few guys that are standing out in terms of effort, physicality, that, that you know maybe pretty consistent throughout spring here? There's a good chunk of them. You know, I, and typically the reason I don't single out certain guys because you're always going to miss guys. And I almost like to think of a press conference like this as, or, or a, a media opportunity. It's almost like a team meeting, you know, and I don't like to leave things out of a team meeting. Um, so maybe I'll do a better job bringing that list with me next time. But it's it's a really good number of guys. It really is. And they're at all different positions. You've seen guys flash up front. You've seen guys on the edges like you know, Jafari Harvey. He plays so hard that even if his footwork isn't perfect, he finds a way to become part of a play and impacting a play. Chance. Chance has had a great spring. 
you know, and has fought through some nicks and some bumps and bruises to show that, you know what, I can play when I'm a little bit banged up. You know, I think I think K4 has done a really good job. I think Corey has done a really, Wayman's done a really good job. You know, Wesley's done a really good job. I've seen guys from Al Blades, Gilbert Fireson. I could, I'll stop there knowing that there's more, but you do. You do. There's a lot of guys that, that need to be commended, and we do. We praise. We always praise effort. We always reward performance. And I guess the best way to put it, there's progress. There's really good progress in some areas, and then some, you know, a little bit slower in other areas. But needless to say, there's progress. So we just got to keep our foot on the gas.